Welcome back. Here's the last major interface that AP students are required to know about. And this is the comparable interface. And it's nice because you've used this before with the string class. You were just taught when you want to compare strings, use dot compare to. But what you didn't know is you were actually using a class that implements the very popular interface called comparable. Here's the comparable interface. All you have to do is you just have to implement the method public int compare to object O. Now if you remember how this is used in code, you usually go like name one dot compare to name two. So that's what object O is. It's the thing you're trying to compare to. Somebody's going to call the method compare to and test against the second object. And here's the rule with the method. You're going to return a number larger than zero. This doesn't mean it has to be one. It could be any number larger than zero. Return a number larger than zero. If the calling instance, so whoever, whoever went name one dot compare to, name one is the calling instance. And if they're larger than object O, then you return larger than zero. If it's equal in size or whatever you're going to judge it on, you return zero. And if the object that calls the method is smaller than the argument, you return less than zero. You get to decide how the comparison is done. So when it was done with strings, it was doing things like, well, Z is bigger than A, right? Uh, B is smaller than C. So they were doing it what they call lexicographically. But let's say you have some other classes you can decide how to compare to. Let's look at the Java docs for this. Here's interface comparable. Notice how many classes built into Java use this interface. So even though you could write your own methods to compare two objects that you create, uh, or sorry, two classes, wait, sorry again, two objects of the same class, you could write a method called check which one is bigger, but the nice thing about using compare to is, is anybody that looks at your class and sees that it implements compare to, they know how to use it because compared to such a popular interface that's been implemented over and over and over. And I mean, they talk about it a lot here, but that's really it. Compare to some object and send back an integer. And there's sort of the little details. Now, how do you actually code compare to in with this weird object argument? Let's give you an example. So here we have a runner and I have a very simple class called block. A block has a weight. That's it. What I want to do is, is I want to make my code able to do this. After I've made two blocks, I want to be able to go if A compared to B, just like you do with strings, but I want to be able to do it with these blocks. If A compared to B is bigger than zero, would be saying, hey, if A is bigger, you should get bigger than zero. So A is bigger, else B is bigger. Makes sense. How do we get this working with compare to? Well, of course, it's giving me the red line because my block class has not implemented or coded compare to. So let's code it in. Public integer compare to object O. Now, you don't really have a choice on that heading. You can't change that to a double. You can't change that to a block. That's not going to work either later on. Okay, because we're actually trying to satisfy the comparable interface. Do it just like the interface says you have to do it. Okay, now what do we code? Well, you have to remember that a block is going to be calling this code. So like A is going to call compare to, and the argument is another block. Okay, so when we go back here, all I want to know is if my weight is bigger than the weight of that object. So you're probably tempted to do this. If my weight, some people would put this dot weight, but you don't have to. So we could say if my weight is bigger than O's weight, then return, I got to return a number bigger than zero. You don't put that. Send back the number one. Okay, that's bigger than zero and very simple. But you'll see I have a problem. Object is like the mother class. All classes you make build off of object. 
unless you're extending something else. But object is the top of the chain. The problem with the object class is it says cannot find variable weight. Object types don't have a weight. Blocks have a weight. But you know from your runner when it's used, you will be passing a block in unless the coder's been drinking too much. So you know a block's coming in. So what you have to do here, and you probably guessed it right, is we have to cast O into a block. And so you just do that. You cast O into a block, and you tell that reference to access weight. And that's good, because a block has weight. So if my weight is bigger than the weight of the object coming in, return 1. Else, if weight is less than block O's weight, return negative 1. Oh, lots of typos today. What's wrong here? What's wrong here? I need one more there. There we go. Else, they must be equal. Return zero. Okay, that one you have no choice on for equality. Okay, return zero. And that is a nice little beginner compare to method. <clears throat> now, since you've done compare to like this, and this should work, you're going to notice our runner now is happy. And when I run the runner, it's actually going to work. B is bigger, and B is bigger. If you want to make B smaller, give it another test, right? You should always test all your cases. A is bigger. And you know what? I didn't do anything when it's equal, but I guess nothing should happen here if they're equal. B is bigger. Well, I guess that is my else. So technically that's wrong. I got to do a little else if A dot compared to B is less than zero. B is bigger. Else system out print line a and b equal there we go that looks a little better now this will work now you may say well that's great but why did i have to call it compare to and do the whole object o thing i mean we were just talking about a block why didn't i just write a method that said am i bigger than this block well here's the nice thing now that you've gone through the trouble to write integer compared to object O, you get to do this. You get to be part of the club. Implements comparable. And yeah, you do implement comparable. You can't, if we take it out, yeah, you're not comparable. That doesn't work. But you got compared to, now you're comparable. This is nice. And uh, we're going to give you one really good advantage of this in the next video. Uh, that'll talk about why bother being comparable when you don't have to be because there's benefits. So hopefully that's a little introduction how to get to become a comparable and how to code compare to. Now we're going to ask you to write a compare to method for another class in here afterwards for practice but we will point out one thing. If you're happy with this, this is a more of the beginner way to do it. Let me show you a little easier way. And this works for depending what class you're doing it with. Keep in mind I decided to judge by weight. You can judge by anything a class has, but check out this one. So this is going to be a slightly more efficient version. I'm just going to say return my weight minus And that does the exact same thing. Well, not the exact same thing, but pretty close. If you think about it, if my weight is bigger, a bigger number, subtract a smaller number, is going to be a positive number. That's a number bigger than zero. Before, I was saying return one. But really, this handles it. That returns a number bigger than zero. If my weight is smaller, this is going to evaluate to a negative number, and it's negative. And if they're equal, it's going to be zero. It doesn't change how the way this is working. That's why compared to is great. It just checks, is it bigger than zero? It's not checking, 
is it equal to 1 or is it equal to negative 1? So that's important to remember. If you're ever just, just basing on numbers, that's a very quick way to write compared to right there. But it's an option, right? Some students, they just like that because, and then that way, well, obviously it's faster and it's a nicer way to write it. Anyways, have fun with that one. And in the next video, we're going to show you, well, what were those benefits to being comparable?